Mr. Cooper, what are you doing, Lexington? I'm the uh, curator of modern political manuscripts at the University of Kentucky Library and also teach uh, a course each semester in Kentucky history. Okay. What can you tell us about the formation of Fayette County? Well, this place was actually named before it was settled. Uh, in the spring of 1775, a group of explorers and hunters from Pennsylvania camped nearby here. While they were here, they received word of the Battle of Lexington in Massachusetts and the American Revolution. Uh, so they decided that this place should be named Lexington. Uh, it wasn't until four years later that there is actually a, what you would call a permanent settlement here. Uh, in April of 1779, uh, Robert Patterson, uh, who was an ensign in the militia at Fort Herod, uh, was ordered by the Virginia government to bring 25 people and establish an outpost or a garrison uh, somewhere north of the Kentucky River. Uh, they selected this site. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, erected the first blockhouse and later a fort uh, just down the street here <coughs> uh, from us uh, at the corner of uh, what is now Mill and Maine. Uh, <coughs> and that was the, the, or the permanent origins of, of Lexington. What can you tell us about the courthouse itself? What, um... it, it was patterned somewhat after the earlier forts that had been built uh, in Kentucky already, uh, some of which have been reconstructed, the, uh, the one at Fort Herod, the one at uh, Boonesboro, and so forth. Uh, in, in the very beginning, because of, of Indian problems and so forth, uh, most of the inhabitants lived within uh, the stockade, uh, although that would quickly change and, and dwellings would begin to be built around the perimeter. Okay. What other historical pieces could you share with us about um, historical figures the past? Uh, if, if, if I could deter you a moment, I, I should have mentioned really in talking about uh, the formation of Lexington that uh, the town is actually formed before the county. Uh, it was not until 1780, the next year after the founding of Lexington, that Fayette County uh, was established. And that originally, well, since 1776, all of what we now know as, as Kentucky, with the exception of the Jackson Purchase, which was added later, uh, was Kentucky County, a one county unit for administrative purposes uh, of Virginia. Uh, in uh, 1780, the Virginia Assembly divided Kentucky into three counties, uh, Fayette, Lincoln, and Jefferson. Uh, Fayette, at that time, encompassed about one-third of what is now the entire state, uh, everything north and east of the Kentucky River. And the county was named Fayette after the Marquis de Lafayette, who was the um, most influential and dedicated French supporter of the Americans in the Revolution. Of course you have the ones which are well known like Henry Clay who spent 50 years in political service uh, in the House of Representatives in the United States Senate as Secretary of State uh, was a candidate for president three times. You have people like John Breckinridge <coughs> who's statue stands across the way. He was vice president uh, under President Buchanan, then a candidate for president in 1860 on the Southern Democratic ticket. Uh, but some of the more interesting people are really some of the lesser known, I think. Uh, people like John McKinney, uh, who was a school teacher on this site where the courthouse is now, as early as 1783. There's a little marker over there, I think, indicating there was a schoolhouse there. Uh, McKinney is probably better known as Wildcat McKinney uh, because sometime in the 1780s, uh, when he was getting ready to open school for the day, a Wildcat came in the door of his, his schoolroom and attacked him. 
and he proceeded to wrestle with the wildcat and strangled it. And uh, when, the, when help finally arrived, the wildcat was dead, but the, uh, its, its claws and, and teeth were still embedded in McKinney. And the story is, and I'm sure it may be apocryphal, but the story is that McKinney was so shaken by the incident that he decided to dismiss school for that day. <laughs> uh, there are people like Constantine Raffinesque, uh, who's well known among scientists, but not among the, the general public, uh, who was a professor of natural sciences at Transylvania University. A very eccentric uh, individual, but one who, who contributed immensely to uh, the, the botanical and the zoological information at that time. Uh, a fellow who, uh, for instance, proposed to build a botanical garden and an arboretum in Lexington in the 1820s. The exact same thing that the city and the University of Kentucky are now proposing to do much, much later. Uh, uh, he, he eventually left Transylvania under a cloud. Uh, there was a lot of, of um, probably professional jealousy among his colleagues, plus the fact that he didn't uh, attend his own classes very well. He would go off on field trips and be gone for six weeks at a time. I'm sure the students at Transylvania loved it, but uh, the administration didn't uh, take it very kindly. And he eventually left and, and supposedly put a cloud or, or a curse on Transylvania University. Uh, someone many, many years later, after Raffinesque had been dead for a long time, uh, found that he'd been buried in Philadelphia, and they thought it would be a good idea for uh, to disinter the body, bring it back, and he's now buried uh, in the basement of Transylvania, or of, of Morrison Hall out of Transylvania. And, and uh, there's the legend that uh, every Halloween, or maybe on his birthday, I'm not sure which, but some brave students will volunteer to spend the night uh, over the, the crypt so that uh, Raffinesque can't escape and destroy the, the university. People like that, I think, are maybe not as, as uh, important in the total picture, but certainly a lot more interesting. Uh, King Solomon, who uh, was a hopeless derelict and the town drunk, uh, but who, when in 1833, a very serious cholera epidemic struck Lexington, uh, 300 people died in two weeks, including three doctors who were trying to treat it. Uh, there weren't enough people to dig graves, to dispose of the bodies. Uh, people who could wouldn't because they feared contacting the disease. Uh, King Solomon dug graves almost around the clock, mm. and he survived the epidemic. He never, uh, never contacted cholera. Many years later, uh, a fine uh, tombstone was erected to him in uh, the Lexington Cemetery because of, of his services. People like that, I think, make uh, every county and city of this size are going to have their fair share of prominent people. People are well known. But I think it's the thing that makes Lexington and Fayette County's history so rich, the fact that they have a lot of characters like the ones that I've just mentioned, who, who after all were, were common individuals, but who made uh, uh, the community and the society uh, more, more unique. That tourism, of course, is one of our, our major industries here. I probably should have mentioned that when we were talking about the economy. Uh, to start right here in Lexington, uh, within easy walking distance, you can absorb uh, some of the, the magnificent history uh, of the town and of the county. Uh, you can get uh, an interesting contrast between the new and the old. For instance, we're standing here by the newest building, the Bank of Lexington. Two blocks north of here is Gratz Park. Uh, which uh, at one time was a part of the Transylvania University campus. Uh, Benjamin Gratz uh, gave that lot to the, the college. In fact, it was originally called the Little College Lot. But around that, the perimeter of, of Gratz Park there, there are magnificent examples of 
antebellum architecture in homes, uh, uh, both the federal and the Georgian style. You have the Hunt Morgan House, uh, you have the Bodley House, which served as the headquarters of the Union Army during the Civil War when they occupied Lexington. You have the Gratz home. Benjamin Gratz was one of the early residents of Lexington. In fact, I believe the first millionaire in Kentucky. He came from Philadelphia, was a merchant. Uh, further on, Transylvania University, uh, founded in 1780, the oldest college uh, west of the Allegheny Mountains. Uh, and on the Transylvania campus, uh, uh, there is the, uh, the uh, Robert Patterson cabin, uh, the fellow we spoke of who, who founded Lexington. Uh, we have uh, there at one time, Transylvania had one of the finest medical schools in the country. As a matter of fact, they for a while had more students than Harvard Medical School. Uh, and they have in the library at Transylvania uh, much of the old medical school library and, and the medical apparatus and, and equipment which they used in the school. Morrison Hall on the, on the Transylvania University campus is an interesting historical uh, building. Uh, it was built in the 1820s by Gideon Shyrock, who was one of the leading architects and who introduced uh, the Greek Revival style into Kentucky. And it's interesting to note that uh, for his services as an architect, uh, he was paid in land. Transylvania University owned some land, I think, in what is now Franklin County, uh, which they paid him for his services. And, and when the building was finished, uh, he, uh, he gave the college a guarantee uh, for 17 years, uh, and the building has done considerably better than that. <laughs> but the whole area north of the downtown, around Gratz Park, on North Broadway, and in the other direction south of downtown on uh, South Mill and Upper Street, is, is shrouded in, in history. Uh, fortunately, uh, there has been a, a strong historic commission, uh, the Bluegrass Trust, uh, which have, have been involved uh, in, in saving historic structures. <clears throat> they haven't saved them all. They, they haven't saved a lot of them that they would have liked to. Uh, but but they, I, I think it's been a, a decent compromise between the old and the new, and, and we have preserved some of our history here, which I think is fortunate. Okay. Is there anything that you would like to say yourself about Fayette County? Well, of course, there there are uh, outside of Lexington there there are a number of things that uh, are of interest. Uh, uh, not far south of here uh, is uh, Walnut Hill Presbyterian Church, which is the oldest uh, Presbyterian church still standing in the state. It was built in 1801. Uh, while we're talking about churches, uh, one thing which interests me, uh, in Lexington, you have two black churches that were established in 1790. Now, I'm talking about all black churches established.